Welcome. My name is George Pearson, and I run the How To Gurus channel here on YouTube. Most of the videos in my channel are short demonstrations of the different tools and techniques you'll find in various software programs. Right now I have several hundred of these quick videos available on YouTube. This video, though, is different. This is part of a new series of longer demonstrations that I'm doing to show you how to complete complex projects from start to finish using a variety of techniques and tools. All of the images I use in these projects are in the public domain and I've included a link to the pictures in the video description in case you want to work along using the same images. Okay, let's move on to the project. In this Photoshop wedding photography video I'm going to be showing you how you can do a duotone look. Now a duotone basically is a colorized black and white image. It's a real nice look it has kind of a nice old-fashioned feel to it. Now there are two easy ways to do this. So I'll show you the first and then the second way. The first one is good but not great. The second one is much much better and frequently overlooked. Let's start off by making a copy of the background layer, just a habit that I'm in. There we go. Gives me a protection layer in case I mess things up. Alright, now I have this. The first standard tool to use up here under image and adjustments is hue saturation. Now you can do this either directly on the image layer as we're doing here or of course you could do this particular one under layer and adjustment layer and you have hue saturation right there. You can do it both ways. This time I'll be doing it just on the actual image itself. So image adjustments hue saturation. Now in here this allows us to adjust the hue or color the amount of color and the lightness of the image. Great tool for doing all kinds of color adjustments. It's my favorite tool for doing a sepia tone look which in essence is a duotone look. We're doing kind of a bluish duotone here. You can colorize like that. That gives you your your sepia tone look. You can then adjust the color over here. If you want to have that bluish look, just go over here to the blues and then adjust your saturation and your lightness in there. So you have a lot of controls. There's a fast way on this and that's up here on presets. They have one here called cyanotype. There you go and that sets the basic settings for you. The colorize and all the basic settings. You can then come in and adjust those as you like to give it just the look that you want. Pretty straightforward as you can see. So there we go. Now, If you want to give it an old-fashioned look you can then do a little bit of darkening vignetting around the outside for a bit more of an old-fashioned technique and that's filter and then lens correction. Let this come up and they're going to be doing a vignette using the lens correction filter. There it is. Go over to custom right in here vignette. You can make the outside corners of your image lighter or darker. We're going to take this and actually push this to the darker side. There we go. Just darken down the outside corners like that. Choose OK. And there's a kind of old fashioned duotone look. All right, that's one technique and it's pretty good. It looks real nice. But there is another way to do this which is even better. Let's make another copy of our background here. There we go. It's copy two. And this time we're going to first convert the image over to a black and white so we have control and get the best black and white conversion we can and then apply our color onto that converted black and white. So image adjustments this time black and white. Now again you can do this if you want to as an adjustment layer and there's the black and white right there. So you have those two different ways to go in this video I'm doing these right on the image as opposed to doing them with adjustment layers. So image adjustments black and white brings up our black and white filter. There we go. The nice thing about this is we can come through here start off by checking some of our different defaults and see which one gives us the best effect. Oh, that's, that's pretty bad. Let's just try lighter. I'll try maximum black maximum white that's not very good neutral density is really bad red filter yellow filter I think the green 
photo looked pretty good here. Darker is not too bad. Each one of these, if you notice, changes these settings down below here. What this does is it allows you to adjust the conversion of each one of these to a gray tone. So your reds, your yellows, your greens, cyans, blues, and magentas, you can control how those are adjusted. So if we cancel that and you look at the image, we have some blues in the window here, a lot of whites, and a lot of yellow in the middle in here. So most of what we're dealing with I'm really concerned with are yellows. Okay, back here to adjustments, black and white. So if I come in here and play with the yellows, you can see we can control how those yellows adjust. I think a little darker is a little nicer on that. You can lighten the reds up. You'll find more of the reds will be in her flesh tones. So bring the reds up and yellows down a bit. We can get a little more contrast look in the background pillars. Now the windows had a lot of blue in them. They look pretty good right now. Notice if I pull this down here, it's really showing up right up in that area there. So we can control that. If I don't want to have that highlight up there, I can darken that down by bringing down the cyans. If we adjust our blues a little bit, I can do even more darkening down the top of that window. The nice thing about that is it, it takes it away as being a focal point. So again, by being able to come in here and control the different channels we can be very specific on how we convert the overall image to our black and white. So the nice thing about this is that we can get a great black and white image first. Once that's done, let's just do a little preview. There's before and there it is after. Once we have our image adjusted where we want it, we then can tint that right here. Tinting allows us to put in the color value. So here's kind of our, our sepia tone look in here someplace. You can adjust the saturation, how much color, on the bottom slider and what the color is on the top slider. Let's go ahead and find our blues. And over in here somewhere. And then adjust the saturation. Once you've done, you can still come back up here and still adjust the colors again. So this is adjusting the colors in the color version of the image. So by using the black and white with the tint option, we have far more control over how we convert our color image into a colorized black and white image. So there's the original and there we go. Notice how by being able to use our controls, you're able to get rid of that highlight up there real nicely because it was separated out from the other colors. And then we can really focus in on the color and the values inside of the bride here in the middle. So that's my preferred way to get the duotone look, in this case kind of the cyanotype look, is to use the black and white, not what you would normally think of. Use the black and white, get the best black and white image you can first, then tint the black and white, adjust your tint, and then go back in and fine-tune or tweak the values in your black and white. Far more control this way than you would have by just doing a standard colorize over in the hue and saturation, which is the, the normal way of, of that people normally think about doing this. So that's the real trick here, is to use the black and white control for your duotone look. Okay, so there's the one. This is the one that was done with a hue saturation. Here's the one that we did with the black and white. Let's have a little better look in the in the dress, a little more detail showing in, in the dress in there. Let's do the final step. We'll go ahead and we'll put in the vignetting on this one as well. I'll just run this up here. The last filter you used always shows up at the top. Run that and it puts in the same settings. So it just copies those settings. So there is the version that we got with the hue saturation and then here's the improved version that we got by using the black and white with the tint option right down there. So there you go. That is how you can create the duotone look or the colorized black and white look. Thank you for watching this special Photoshop photography project video. Don't forget to subscribe so that you will get first notice of new project videos in the future. Just click on this link right here where it says subscribe here.
you can get all 12 project videos in this series along with 26 special videos demonstrating the tools and techniques that I used in these projects by clicking on this link right down here. And then thank you again for watching this training video.